Right, uh, getting to know Nutrien and getting out and about to contact uh, people. I'm actually catching up now with, firstly, Dennis Howe. Um, Dennis and your wife, Joe, I believe, have got the name on your shirt, I would say. Matarinka Park, Standard Birds. Firstly, Dennis, welcome. Thanks, Paul. Uh, Matarinka Park for a lot of the Victorians possibly down here that may not know how big your establishment is and and the likes. How many horses do we have at Matarinka Park? Uh, we've probably got 12 brood mares here at the moment. Um, 12 brood mares, we've got uh, nine poles um, on the ground this year. Uh, yeah, so we, we normally aim up about 10, 11 mares each year to fill up and see how we go from there, mate. And you're as you're sellers, you, you like selling them through the sales? Yeah, we mostly sell. Um, we'll, we'll keep a filly occasionally. Um, if we like a filly, you know, and we want to keep a filly out of one of our mares to breed on with. But if they go to sales, they'll have a price on them. And if they make their price, they, they get sold, mate, yeah. Yep, that, that's good. You had a very, very good sale at APG just recently. You would have been wrapped with how that all went about. Yeah, yeah, they were pretty good. We made they made their money. We um, the money we had on them um, was pretty close to what they went for. Um, but they uh, they sold good. Yeah, the colts. We had three colts down there. We had to pull one filly out. She had a little bit of a problem. Um, a couple of weeks before the sale, so we pulled her out. But um, no, the colts sold well. We we're pretty happy with that, mate. It's actually good for a person in your position. The way the sales are working at the minute, um, the confidence in harness racing, full stop, um, both in Australia and New Zealand. I mean, sale prices have been up in New Zealand as well. It, it must give you a fair bit of confidence. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Um, yeah the good thing in Sydney was that um, the sale was pretty strong um, for our horses. Um, anyway, um, but uh, there was fewer of the bigger money buyers weren't in Sydney. So it, it, there was other boys come into the market. There was um, people confident there to buy. Um, so I reckon it was pretty good, good for the game in Sydney. You know, there wasn't um, these huge players there, but um, they all sold well. You know, the nutrient sale. Um, we should publicise it's um, this April ten and eleven. It's a different format. It's a different um, platform. Are you excited about it? Yeah, I think it's going to be good, mate. I think it's just what we needed. Um, I think uh, we're going to get, what, two new group ones next year out of it. Another 400 odd thousand prize money in there. Uh, 2023, we'll have four new group ones on the calendar and another 400,000 there. So, anything that's going to um, do that, I think, has got to be good for the sport. We can't get any back to it, you know. Um, so, um, I'm looking forward to it. And I think um, Nutrien's ability perhaps to get some new buyers into the game. Uh, through their other horse markets, I think is good. So, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I think it'll be a breath of fresh air. And you found Mark and the team terrific behind the scenes, like, a, a, as well? Because one, one of the catches are generally, like, the Melbourne sale. Um, you know, Victorians all know Victorians and, and the likes. It's trying to get to know other people. That's one of the reasons you and I are doing this, so people can actually get to meet you. But um, have you found that experience good? Yeah, look, I knew Mark before um, the sale sort of eventuated. Um, he did come and talk to me about it. Um, yeah, Mark's a good fella. Um, I found uh, it all pretty painless in the process of what we've gone through the sales. Um, I think they'll be the first to admit that there'll probably be things they'll improve on on the first sale, but that's to be expected. Um, and I think Mark's type of bloke that takes feedback from people. He's open and he will listen to people, I think. So um, I'd be be surprised if it doesn't, uh, whatever we do this year, I'd, I'd be very surprised if it doesn't improve going forward. I think anyone that expects them to have no mistakes are kidding themselves because um, that's the only way you, you can improve a business anyway is you come in, if they came in and knocked it for six straight away, um, we're in trouble because there's no improvement, is there? No, well that, it doesn't matter what you're doing, there's no doubt you do it better second time around, it doesn't matter what you do, doing um, well, but I think the, the main thing is that they take the feedback and um, listen and weigh it up and then they act on it. And, and we've all got different opinions on how you do things, but um, I, I think they'll be pretty pretty good at taking feedback. I really do. I, I've got confidence in them to um, listen to the vendors and listen to the buyers and, and um, work on just improving the sale each year. I think it's, it'll be good.
They've had everything thrown at them. COVID for a start. Now floods mm. in New South Wales and mm. heavy rain. I know Mio, who works behind the scenes. Last I heard, she was she was she thought she'd be able to get out in three days, and since then it's done nothing but rain. So I reckon she's still locked in, you know, up yeah. there as well. So it's been very very trying, and they're still very positive in in the way that they've been promoting and and putting the sale product out there. That which I I find good from my point of view. I've, I've loved working with them. I think they've been terrific and very very professional, um, in that manner. You've got. Yeah. Four lots going through, uh, three colts and a filly. Yeah, three colts and a filly. Yeah, we might we might actually start off. We might highlight the filly, which is actually uh, lot number ten. I've got a picture here. I'll just throw the picture up over the top, and she's a she's a lovely type of uh, filly. It looks like a, she's got a fair bit of leg about her, which comes from the Mac Three, I would imagine. Yeah, um, the mother is a fair sized mare. She's a lovely big um, athletic mare. Um, filly was funny when she was born. She was. Uh, she was pretty small and I was a little bit worried. Um, she was an art major and I just thought, oh gee, I want to be one of those little art majors that just doesn't grow. Um, but uh, she got to a stage where she just started growing and growing and growing. She's very athletic looking feeling. The photo we've got there is probably about four or five weeks ago. I would think she's probably filled out a little bit more since then with a little bit of work and that. But um, she's a real athletic type of filly. Um, but uh, uh, got a bit of length in her. Um, yeah, I, I do like her. She's she's a, um, a nice looking little filly, I reckon. It's it's a very good family too, like you said, by art um, art major. Um, it's and it's impressive. Um, how's the memory? She won, went one fifty five, one fifty herself. Fifteen wins, hundred and sixty thousand dollars in stakes. I mean, everyone can read that from the catalogue. This is the first foal out of her. But distant mm. memory, the second dam. She's now had four foals, three year old and older for four four winners off the back of a very impressive yeah. uh, winner yesterday for Dave Moran at Kilmore. Yeah, yeah, she she was a well, she was a magnificent little mare for us. You know, she retired as a three year old. We retired her and got her in foal. Um, she won a couple of group ones for us, just in memory, and just just was wonderful to us. But I always thought she'd do a job as a brood mare, um, and she's certainly proven that. Like out of memory, she was a, a lovely mare. Like. She won in 150, as you said, but she was placed one night at Benangle. Her personal time was 149.08. You know, like she was unbelievable high speed. Um, but just a memory, like she's she's four and four to one yesterday. The one beach memories for Dave Moran, like uh, first start in the wet at Chilmore. I think they've gone 156.7. I think something like that. She's led them from the outside, and she's won by 29 and a half metres untouched. Like she looks like she could be something special. She really does. So um, it's a pretty good Billy's family. If you go through the family, there's a lot of good Billy's in the family. Um, and so I'm hoping it follows through with this Billy we've got in the nutrient sale. And I'd be surprised if it didn't, you know, being, being what she's buying, what she's out of, I'd be surprised if she didn't go, you know. Absolutely, and she looks a likely type. Like I said, she's got a lot of leg there, but she's um, still got that Art Major big neck, big uh, scopey neck that Art Major can leave on his types as well. Yeah, she's a real athletic looking filly. She's, um, she's, um, she looks like a real race horse. So she's not a heavy type of horse. She's a horse that's sort of um, um, got a lot of leg under her, but very athletic looking. You know, I see her running around out in the paddock. She's just a real athletic looking a filly, you know, um, and pretty good nature. She's got a little bit of uh, attitude about her, but her mother had an absolute lot of attitude about her. <laughs> and the grandmother, Kiss and Mary, had a double dose of attitude about her. So this filly's got a little bit, but just she's not silly, you know what I mean? She's she's, she's just just got a little bit there to say on on keep you on your toes, you know. We must say, too, you were going to be having um, videos uh, of them running around the paddock, I think, yesterday taken or today, one of the two days, but that's been mm. that's been put on the Kyber because of uh, just wet paddocks. Yeah, we had about 30 mils yesterday. Um, I think we've had about 40 mils this morning so far, so the paddocks are just covered in water at the moment, so there will be no running up here. With a bit of luck, we might get some walking up videos later in the week. All going well, but um, yeah, we've just been caught out by the weather a bit, yeah. You're not on. You're definitely not on your own. Even here in Victoria, there's a lot of people being caught, caught out. That's for sure. My uh, lot number seventeen. We go through them in um, in numerical order. I suppose is easier for you and I. The rock and roll heaven yep. out of in her memory again. Um, 
This is her second foal, and the first is only a two-year-old, um, and she's another daughter of Mac Three. You must like the Mac Three mares, did you? I do. Yeah, I did. Um, sometimes that can be to your detriment because they've got a Mac. Most of the Mac Threes I've had have uh, he puts a bit into them, a bit of fire, <laughs> so they can take a, take a bit of handling. And um, the trainers that have them don't particularly appreciate seeing a Mac Three walk in the gate, you know. Um, out of these couple of families, um, but um, yeah, I did, did like the Mac Three. Um, I really do. Um, I think he'll really do a job as a brute mare so, uh, Um But um, yeah, this little bloke, he's a very neat little fella. Um, we actually raced his mother. Uh, she won a two-year-old race, I think, for us, and might have won a three-year-old race, I think. Yeah, but she um, her. Uh, she had a little problem, so we retired and put her in foal. Um, we actually raced a grand dam, this bloke's grandmother too, um, was the first foal. Well, she was the first horse we actually bought to start breeding from, a um, little man called Miss Demanding. Yep. About 15, 16 years ago, we, I, we, I said I wanted to start breeding, so I went and bought that filly at the Bathurst sale of Pepper Tree Stud and Pepper Tree. It was a pretty strong sale at Bathurst back in them years. Um, and she was a lovely little filly. She um, won a heat of the gold tiara. Yep. Um, she had a, she was a real high speed filly, you know. Um, but she went and missed as a three year old, so we, we sent her to the stud. And we only got one foal out of her. Two <laughs> foals, sorry. The first one, he, he was a good winner. And then the second one is uh, this fella's mother in her memory. So, yeah. Um, not a lot of foals out of the first couple of dams, but if you look down the page, it's a pretty, pretty good family, sort of. Well, a lot of the yeah. a lot of the Victorians would would love it. Um, you go back to Lord Marquez, New Bold Penny. Um, you got yeah. uh, Lenny the Shark, Botswana. Um, I can have you know David Aiken sitting up, Dave Miles sitting up. There's there's a, it's just a family that just keep leaving winners um, and high yeah. quality winners, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it is, and that's what going way back when. Like, the family probably didn't go back further than that. There's some really good winners in the family, and that's why we went and looking for this little filly, you know. Um, and, and um, we sort of reckoned that was the first one we wanted to get anyway, so we did. And um, it, it's worked out all right. We lost, we lost her having the second foal, um, Miss Demanding. We lost her when, when she foaled in her memory. Um, so consequently, there's not a lot out of the family up close, you know, but um, they've done a pretty good job, the ones that have been to the track, you know. I think that's and what... this fella, he's a nice cult, isn't he? You would be lucky to find a fault with this bloke. He's a good, nice type of horse, yeah. I think that's one of the things you must do when you, you actually have a look at it because sometimes people will see four dams on a page and they say, oh, it's a little bit thin. You go back to your fourth dam and it's sensational. Your third dam, um, uh, Biera, is, um, had eight live foals, seven race, five one. So there's just mm. winners all the way through. There's no problems there. And there is some really, really good winners back right at the back there. There is, yeah. And and you look at, uh, say, Biera, she's got a couple of daughters that are pretty good, good winners too. Yep. Um, so... You know, they, they it does keep throwing up winners this family, you know, and um, yeah, I don't mind this colt. He's a nice, neat colt. He's um, there's not a lot wrong with him, you know. No, definitely not. We might actually we might go to lot number um, two fifty eight just to um, change it up just a little bit for the minute because mm-hmm. the other one is not one that you've bred, and we'll discuss a little bit more on that. But um, mm-hmm. lot number two two fifty eight, I've got to get me right page open though. Who is a roll with Joe out of Custom um, Franco? Now you know a fair bit about this family, don't you? Yeah, yeah. This this mare we bought this mare and. Um... It's a super family. Um, she's probably been a little bit unlucky this mare. Um, a couple of things have gone wrong with some of a couple of horses. And particularly she had one in the West that um, Paul's bought from West Australia before I bought the mare. Um, uh, he's called Timmy Indian. And um, he looked as if he could have been something special. He had nine stars for six wins and a third um, as a three. He had one star as a four-year-old maybe. Um, and he was a uh, pretty green horse. Like, you'd see his replays racing. Like, how they even got him around the track. He used to hang the whole way, and then they'd straighten him for home, and all would get into him, he'd just straighten up, and he'd go like a jet, you know. And I remember talking to Barry all one night, and I said, ask him about him. He said, oh, he, he would be anything. He's also if we could sort him out, you know. Like, he's, he's got so much ability, and um, and he come back from the spell, and he won a couple of races really nice, and... He went straight and 
they, they sort of thought they had their next real good open class horse. And they sent him to the paddock for a spell, and he got bitten by a snake, and they lost him. So, you know, they were gutted, but I was a bit disappointed for the mayor because, you know, you get a horse like that, has got so much ability, and they lose him, you know. Um, so, um, but he looked as if he could have been a pretty special horse, that horse. So, um, but um, he's a nice horse. I think, the, I think off record, you might correct me, but I think there's only two Roy Joe Colts in the sale. I think. Yep. Um, I, I can tell you. I can't tell you that off the top of my head, but I will tell you as as you you keep talking. But yeah, and he's. So talking. I think you know, you know that should should put him in pretty good stead there. But um, he's a lovely cop. He's a nice, big, strong fellow. He's trained to the, the mother. She was a lovely big man. So um, he's got a bit of size around him, this fellow, you know. But um, yeah, I like him. He's a nice cop. Good call. There's two colts, four fillies in the sale. Yeah. That's all. So yeah. Yeah, yeah. I thought I heard him say that on radio the other day. Um, someone said that on the racing channel. I heard him commenting six six roll Joe's. Yeah, that'd be right. And two colts. So. Yeah, and he's doing doing a cracking job role with Joe, isn't he? He's another. There's a quite a few stallions that fly under the radar for from a lot of people that don't sit up and take notice of them, but he's actually doing a really really good job. And he doesn't have a lot of holes for because he's not the most fertile boy on the block, you know. Yep. Takes a bit of getting, but um, I well, I might be wrong, but I think maybe thirty five holes is yep. crop of humans, I think you know, which isn't a lot, you know. So and he's had that problem all the way through, but um, um, yeah, he's a nice cult. He's 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 a nice guy. I like him too. It's uh, the, he's a sire of Ignatius, isn't he? He is. Yeah, I saw Ignatius got West go down there in Sydney. He's, he's a little pocket rocket. He's a lovely horse, but he's grown into a nice sized horse now. Yeah, Ignatius. Oh, he's a nice type of horse. He really is. Yeah. And, um, he throw he does he does throw a nice enough horse I think too roll with Joe I've seen a couple of them uh, a couple of, two yep. of the, two of the fillies already and uh, yeah they're nice fillies as well so yeah you can go yep. oh, worse or wrong there the last of yep. your draft mate is an is an interesting one um, I've actually got my woodland shirt on too you might not be able to see that but I definitely have my woodland shirt on is a um, a sweet Lou head of a man Miss Astronomical this is a brilliant family and there's a bit of a tale to how you come to actually get this cult to um, selling. Yeah, well, he, um, the kids always, every year, we try and pin Ukwa, a wormling for them, um, just because they do a lot of work on the farm here, Matt, Jess, and, and Emily. Um, so we always try and pin Ukwa, yep. uh, a horse for them, and um, it was really hard last year to find one with COVID. It really was, um, and we couldn't go and look at horses and that sort of stuff, so... Anyway, we got on this bloke at um, uh, Doc Hartnett. Um, he was a little bit crook at the time, and uh, John Coffey rang me and said, Look, there's a couple of these horses there, you know. So we um, we couldn't go down and look at him, so um, we got Albert Davis. Albert, through the goodness of his heart, jumped in the car and went and had a look at him, and he rang me back. He said, oh, Yeah, he's a nice little colt, you better buy him. So we uh, bought him, and um, like that was only a matter of weeks later that Doc passed away, sadly, so um, um, he had a few there to get rid of, so we got this fellow, and the kids are pretty happy with him, he's a lovely cult, you know, he had a real good family, so, um, and I do like Sweet Lou's, we've done pretty well uh, selling Sweet Lou's the last couple of years, and I, I really like this fellow, he's got certainly catchy eye, he's got a bit of white face, a couple of white socks, and he's a real deep, rich uh, chocolate colour, and... Um, he probably gets brushed up a little bit more than my horses, Paul, because the girls get down there. But anyway, that's another story. <laughs> I, I was going to ask, how does a pin hooking work? You got you—that's their pay and the like. But they put more more work into their pay, do they? No, no, no. They got their own little cunning kit. They they've done it a few years straight. They started with a cheapy we got from the Shepherd and Sale um, three years ago and um, put it through Bathurst, and they made a bit of money, and then they upgraded, or then they went back to the Shepherd's Island next year, and they bought one, um, a rock and roll dance billy, and they sold it at APG last year. They did really well out of it. Um, I was happy that night. Um, but uh, no, 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 they pay for it. Um, it doesn't good to work out that if they put in, you know, put a bit of work in, they get something out, you know what I mean? And it's a good education. Sometimes I think it wouldn't be a bad option for them to maybe take a bit of a hit and realise it's not all beer and skittles. But anyway, they're going good at the moment. And um, he's a nice cut. I think 
I think he'll sell well. Just he's a ripping looking little horse. He's got a presence about him, and um, he's got that bit of bling too, which most sweet losers have got. But he is a, he's a nice body horse. He's got a bit of barrel about him, and nice horse. Yeah, I like him. I really do. It's a phenomenal family. It's um, Star Chasers family. If you if you want to go back, so Miss Astronomical had uh, six foals, three year old Nolder, four of race, four of one. Um, so that and it's a proven family. But yeah, you just go back to Star Chaser. I actually didn't even look to see how many she's thirteen foals, um, ten of race, eight winners, um, and horses like Safari, yeah. Astronaut, and also then from there Dams leaving horses, and, and of course out of um, Dream Chaser, who was even better. I think thirteen foals, ten race, six winners, Detroit Dan. Sells mo horses that just got better and better with age as well, yep. which is a little bit of the sweet Lou thing. They do definitely get better as three year olds and onwards as well. Yeah, yeah, I think so. And I reckon you find with those those real good families that have got those winners all the way through. They always seem to keep coming up with one. Like they might go through a little patch where you go, oh, this family's you know got to come up with a good horse, and then bang, they'll come up with something nice. It's just. The odds say they're going to come up with another good one, and, and they continually do it. It's, it's just a proven fact, you know. Um, um, so um, hopefully this bloke goes good. Whoever buys him, he's there for sale. It's a, little, it's a little bit of the proven formula, I would say, of yours that uh, you like that. If they've got some strong maternal family, even if it is one or two generations back, that that's the families that you want to have. Yeah, yeah, I um. As we've gone through, we've sort of come back to sort of um, trying to get more quality and get proven families, you know. Like um, sometimes you'll see just a freak of a, a, a mare, race mare, comes from absolutely nothing. And you think, geez, where did that come from? A lot of times those ones don't sort of breed on, you know. They just, you find it with stains, don't you reckon, Paul? Yep. It, we see just an out and out freak, and you go, geez, where did that come from? And, and it's proven it. A lot of times they don't have to do anything, you know. So I think you've got to go to those proven families, and more often than not, they will produce you something, you know. Yeah. Um, that's, that's what we work on. Everyone's different, but that's what we work on, you know. I, I, I love listening to how people. I did a, a live feed yesterday with uh, for Blanche Pool, um, selling um, all their yearlings, and I had uh, Steve Walker, Dennis Bice, and Brett Coffey. And they yeah. all, they, you can learn so much just listening to people that breed a lot of horses. They don't have to have bred the best one or, or, or the rest. But most people have that same sort of philosophy that there's got to be something there somewhere. Um, some people want it initially. Some people don't care if it's four or five generations back. As long as it is there, they're happy to, to do that. But it's um, you, you need that pedigree in your pedigree. You need, sorry, those winners in your pedigree at certain stages to make it uh, worthwhile buying them, doesn't it? Or, you know, and even breeding well, them. It does. Like, you go right back to when we bought um, Distant Memories Mother. Um, just getting back onto her. Like, uh, old Mac Randra, she's had, at the moment, she's had only um, 12 or 13 individual winners. Right? She, she had a few winners before we got her. She's got a two year old at the moment that I've been told will win races. So I think that takes her to 13 minutes. But I bought. I bought old Mac Randra off Ross Gaines simply because she was in foal to Troublemaker. You know, I'd always rated Troublemaker as a brood mare, so I, and I tried to breed to him a couple of times and I, we couldn't couldn't get it get mares in foal. So when that mare came up in foal to Troublemaker and I'd always had my heart set on one. And, but this is going back probably you know, twelve or thirteen years ago for um so I just bought her. I had to have her, you know, we got the Philly that was distant memory, who won us through one, and then she's left out the memory in four winners. So, you know, it's, it's good that that paid off. You know, that might have paid off. There was no guarantee, but that's what I wanted to do. So that's what we did, and it paid off. So we're lucky, you know. It doesn't happen all the time, as you know. No, it you know? definitely does. It was one of the other things that both, uh, all the boys actually said is that they, um, they, they enjoy getting up every morning and looking at the foals that become yearlings, um, and then mm. they, they sell nothing better than watching them race not necessarily winning but you know winning's always good but just being able to see them actually on a racetrack where they belong um, they get a real kick out of that as well yeah look it's, it's funny isn't it like as much as you hate that bloody phone alarm going off four hours <laughs> a night when you're breeding when you you know there's nothing more rewarding than going out there and 
for me if you have a foal. You get the foal out there from the ground and it's sitting there and, you know, the foal gives us the first little whinny to its mother and its mother calls back and you go, gee, how good is that? But then the steps you go through from then on in, like the growth a horse has when they come into the boxes for the yearling sale prep, you know, they come in virtually as a, a weanling, you know, a bit rough on the edges, you know, a bit woolly looking to what you present at the sale, it's magnificent. But then the next step is someone comes along and buys your horse and the thrill you get when they win a race by being able to go up and shake their hand, they well done. You know, they put their hand in their pocket, they bought the horse and they've won a race. I get I get a great thrill out of ringing someone after like um, after they've won a race, like I rang Dave Miranda yesterday. I said, Chief, well done, mate, you know, that's really good. That that's fantastic to see them people that have been rewarded for putting their hand in the pocket, you know. And the relationships you build through that go on forever, you know. But right. so uh, it is very rewarding. Um, it, it really is. It's hard to explain to people who don't do it, but it is rewarding to think that you can have so much fun out of seeing someone else win a horse, race with a horse, you know. We, we, we undersell one win too, don't we? I think a lot of the times, um, you know, people say, oh, it's one win. You know, we want a horse that's won 10 races or 15 races and, and things along those lines. But it's an achievement just to win a race, no matter where you are, no matter what you do. You've got to be able to enjoy that one win, I think. That's right. We, the, the thing is, the only person that knows what went into winning that one race or a couple of people is probably the owner and the trainer. They might have had hiccups all the way through too, mightn't they? Yep. And to win that race is probably like winning a Melbourne Cup for some people because of the hiccups they've had all the way through. I'm sure you've had horses like that. I know well, I have had horses like that. I was only talking to a trainer in Sydney at the past out of week. He won a race at Newcastle. I won't say who it was, but he won a race at Newcastle with a, with a two-year-old. And he said the bloke was a multi-millionaire, but he said they'd had a few hiccups with this horse and he won his two-year-old at Newcastle. They didn't think he was going to get the track on stage or something. You know? And he said, five minutes after the race, the bloke rang him and said what a thrill it was. You know? And he said, this bloke was a multi-multi-millionaire, but he won a $6,000 race at Newcastle. just over the moon. You know? So you yep. can't put a price on winning a race, can you? Like the enjoyment you get. Nah, and I'm fortunate here in Victoria. I get to go to the racetracks and you see people um, at Bort Wedderburn Oyen the other day win a mm. race and just the joy they get out of yeah. out of winning winning a race. And I think we definitely, as an industry, I think we undersell how great a thrill that is. And there's a lot of people, we want to get new people into the sport. We want to get new people into the sport. Just explain how good it is just to win a race, I think is one of the key parts for mine. And you don't need to own a full own all the horse pool to get the thrill. I think who is it? Someone down in Victoria, I see are advertising to get into syndicates. They say um, one own one percent of the horse for a hundred percent of the the, the thrill. Uh, thrill. Yep. You know that's what it's about. It doesn't matter. You know, let's be honest. If you go into horse racing, racing horses, thinking you're going to come out making heaps of money, you're probably deluded. <laughs> but you can have a lot of fun with the mates. You know, um, and, and that's what we've done. We've gone. We, I've got mates into a couple of horses the last couple of years simply because the fun you have when you win a race with a group of people yep. is great. Yep. You know, it's, it's just so infectious, you know. Um, I think the one thing on that messaging that you said there is, uh, and a lot of people say it, if you get into racing to make money, you might be kidding yourselves. But you won't. You don't have to lose money if you do it smart and all the rest. You can still have a lot of fun going through. Um, you know, you might need a car payment done, and all of a sudden a horse wins a race. There's your car payment done. Five yeah. years down the track, you might go back and say, "Geez, that horse didn't win me a lot of money." You forget about that car yeah. payment that you had no money to pay for, and all of a sudden it gets across the line and wins that that race for you. I think. Um, yeah. I think that's the one thing. It's a journey and it's an experience. You get to meet people. You get to have so much fun, and it's a way we've got to be able to sell a sport. I think. Oh, I, I definitely think syndication is where we've got a target. I really do. Because um, I just think um, I, those those boys that I got into, those, that horse that I got them into, they were predominantly galloping. Yep. Folks. And they're from stretch anywhere from Brisbane to back here to Wagga, you know, and they're everywhere in between. And um, that horse race at an angle one night in a nice race. So we all met up down there, the wives and families and that, and we stopped down there and, we took them to Menangle, and um, it was a nice, a good night. Um, they just thought it was so good. They just said, how long has this been going on, you know? Yep. So, you know, if we can expose them people to that, you know, that, that's what you want, you know? Um, and that's where we've got to go as a sport, I think. Otherwise, 
we're going to get left behind. The, the thoroughbreds do it so well, syndication. I yeah. think, you know, you see blokes like, um, I've noticed Matty Craven's pushing it pretty hard down there, syndications. Yeah. I think that's the way we've got to go. You know, I really do, even to the extent where maybe the, the, um, the boards maybe come on board and try and help a little bit with syndications and make it a little bit easier somehow. But, um, I think that's definitely where we've got a target. I really do. Absolutely, and and, and make sure people can um, uh, get involved in the um, with the horses. Dennis, I reckon I could talk to you all the time. I'm going to catch up with you at the Oakland Sales when we get there. There'll be no problems there. If anyone wants to get in touch with you uh, right at the minute, oh four one eight. 692, that's a phone ringing, isn't it? <laughs> 692 right. 273 0418 692 273. Get in touch with you. But when will you be at the um, Oakland's Junction, mate? Will you be there on the uh, Thursday, Friday? Yeah, we'll be down there on the Friday morning early. Yeah, um, we've got a bit going on here that week prior, so um, we'll get away early on Friday morning. We're about we're only a bit, bit over four hours from our place down to Oakland Junction, so um, we'll probably be down there about um, 10.30, something like that, mate. Um, it won't take us long to clean the horses up. They'll be pretty good before they get there. And, um, yeah, anybody wants to come out and have a look at them, by all means, or give me a call. Um, yeah, look forward to uh, getting down to Melbourne and showing our horses off, mate. Very good. And the sweet Lou won't take long to groom because he'll be groomed within an inch of his life the night before by the girls, won't he? He will be, mate. There's no doubt. Yep, <laughs> yep. I'll just have to get them onto my horses a bit more and we'll be right, eh? <laughs> Dennis, thank you very much, mate. I uh, love the chat and I uh, love exposing your yearlings, mate, and I look forward to seeing you at uh, Nutrient. No worries, mate. Thanks very much for that. and um, We'll see you down there, mate.